Hey, Chris, it's Elena with the Charlotte Observer. Um, I was wondering, your first training camp, I guess, is kind of wrapped now. How would you describe it overall? Um, it was definitely uh, different than I expected, especially with the, you know, all the precautions that we had to make with the coronavirus. And you, know, you felt like you were waiting forever you know, from the time of the season and then to pro day. Uh, with no OTAs, it felt like it took a, a really long time to get here. But, you know, once we got rolling, it, it went by fast. So, no, I'm just thankful for it. And, but I definitely say it different than I thought. Chris, uh, hey, it's Josh from the Riot Report. Um, I'm just I'm kind of curious. Uh, obviously, at Wisconsin, you played in front of large crowds. Um, have you played in front of, like, a real game in front of no fans? before uh <laughs> no not not uh no fans but uh every time we go play at northwestern there's not many people there so <laughs> I, i'll say pretty close but <laughs> not not zero fans <laughs> um what was the what was this the today's practice was kind of like a mock game a scrimmage how important is it for a guy like you a, a young rookie to to make sure that you're out there making plays? And then how do you balance that between like trying to press and, and go too hard? Um, I think that, you know, there's only one way that you can play football uh, and that's going uh, your hardest each snap. You know, that's how you stay healthy. and That's how the game is meant to be played. But at the same time, uh, you have to balance that with, you know, these guys are your teammates. So you're not laying into, laying into anybody, majority tag off or, or thud or something like that. But yeah, I told myself just uh, do what you do. Make sure you're on your assignments, your alignments, and make one splash play a day. And, you know, I, I felt confident that if I could do that, you know, people would know that I'm a pretty good player. Chris, uh, this is Miles Simmons from Panthers.com. How much do you feel like you missed without preseason games, especially as a rookie coming in? Um, I, I think you missed uh, quite a bit. Um, not too much, but I think it's just that experience. You know, you get those um, not necessarily jitters because it's still football, but, you know, you're stepping up to a new level. So you're not uh, wide-eyed by the time that first actual game comes. But, you know, outside of that, I don't think I missed too much um, because we did a great job of uh, scrimmaging and having the competition periods within the organization, within our practices. So I don't think we missed too much, but I think that atmosphere is something that we definitely missed. Chris, this is Nick from NBC. I'm oh, sorry. Um, how do you think your camp is gone, and, and what do you think of your, your shot to make the 53 or, or even the extended practice squad? Uh, I think my camp uh, went pretty well. Um, I think that you know, I gained a lot of people's respect and uh, trust. That was something that, I, that was, I was big on. I wanted people to know that you know, I'm a heady football player. I, I know what I'm going to do on each play, uh, and I tried to show that as best I could. You know, I'm pretty confident that you know, they at least like me, but you know, we'll see. Come tomorrow, I don't know what time it is, but come tomorrow, we'll find out. Chris, you're obviously from a uh, an NFL family. Uh, yeah. Were your dad was was your dad and your brother like as curious mm -hmm. as anyone else to kind of know what football during a pandemic kind of looked and felt like when you would talk to them? Oh yeah, yeah, a little bit. Um, they kind of got it from two different perspectives. When my brother still, you know, coaching out in Baltimore. So uh, everybody was kind of wondering, you know, how every day looked and what was uh, different about the practices. And at the end of the day, we were still playing football. You know, we we're still handling our business, but also trying to stay as safe as possible. You know, it's, it's new for everybody. But, yeah, they definitely, they definitely wondered. Uh, my dad thought we were getting soft with all the new CBA stuff. But, <laughs> yeah, they, they enjoyed it. Did either of them have any kind of advice for you, kind of as you, you kind of go into this roster uh, cut down situation um no not necessarily um they kind of gave me advice uh, pre-camp and a little bit throughout and they said man just just show them the type of player that you're going to be show them the type of person that you are uh, your character both on and off the field um, how smart you can be play physical play fast play the game the way it's meant to be and you know the chips will fall where they where they lay but at the end of the day if, if you show them that then you'll make a lasting impression Hey, Chris, it's Jason Huber with WFNZ Radio. I hope you're doing well. Uh, this camp, has there been one guy or, or you know, a few guys on, on the defense, veterans, who have helped you in particular? Oh, yeah, um, everybody, to be honest. Uh, my entire linebacker room, um, 
from Shaq to, to here to Adarius to Julian, who we added to uh, JK and, and Jermaine, you know, all those guys help me out tremendously. You know, every day, you know, there's something uh, uh, that I can get a little bit better at or they can tweak for me and they, they can see the type of player that I am and kind of help guide me in, in, in what they're seeing, they, their perspective. Uh, the entire D-line has helped me out a lot. They gave me a lot of confidence. Um, gave a lot of – showed me that they trust me a lot with the play calling out there. And then our, our secondary, you know, I'm confident in those guys. I listen to them whenever they want to make a check. Uh, Trey actually helped me out a lot. You know, early on in camp, um, he checked something. And, you know, in my mind, I'm playbook, playbook, playbook. And, you know, he he changed it on the field. And he kind of just pulled me to the side. I was like, yeah, I know, like, playbook-wise, we wouldn't do this. But, you know, we're checking this because I saw this tendency and this and that on this snap. So, you know, they kind of just helped push me to become better. And everybody helped tweak my game a little bit. So I'm definitely grateful for all of that. Chris, going off that, have you gotten to have any chats with Luke Keekley during your time at all and pick his brain? Oh, yeah, yeah, for sure. I, I ask him every day to evaluate me, uh, to tell me something, give me some type of little tip in my game. Um, it's funny, like, the, the way we met, I met him on the elevator. Uh, he already knew my name, but, you know, we all had our mask on. I didn't even recognize him because he lost so much weight. And then, you know, we've kind of been talking every day since then. It's been, it's, it's been an honor and a blessing to have him there. Hey, Chris, right, guys, uh, we have, okay. no, go ahead. We have time for probably two or three more questions. Chris, what are your plans for the next 24 hours as you kind of wait for your phone to either ring or, or not ring? Yeah, um, I think my plan is going to be to do something to preoccupy my mind, which is going to be very hard. Uh, maybe, I don't know, I'm not a big video game player, but maybe I should do it for a day. Uh, try to find a movie marathon or something try not to worry about it at all. I'll probably talk to my family a lot, to be honest. You know, they, they take my mind off of it. Talk to my nephews and, and my niece a little bit. All right, Chris, we appreciate hey, oh, you. Oh, can I ask one? Yeah, yeah, we'll finish up with you, Jonathan. All right, um, Chris, I hope you don't mind me asking a non-football uh, question. It's really not relevant to this. But anyway, I saw on your Twitter, uh, your banner um, that you, you, I guess you proposed. How'd you do it? And when did you do it? I did it on December 14th, 2019. Um, I, I, don't, I don't remember exactly the time, but it was night. I know it was after 6 o'clock because it gets dark in Wisconsin at 4.30 anyway during that time. But I actually set it up with one of my uh, former teammates, actually, Zach Bond, who's with the Saints now. Uh, his girlfriend is a photographer. And I had them both kind of hide out around the Madison uh, Capitol building. And um, I told my fiance, I told her, I tried to trick her and take her on a really nice uh, steakhouse dinner date. Uh, that was right there on the square, but uh, it, it didn't work because she wasn't hungry. So I, I tried to uh, lie my way into getting her to dress up a little bit so we can go on a walk. Just said we haven't done it in a while. And once we got to a certain point, me and Zach and his girlfriend, well, his fiance now, we mapped it all out. And you know, I dropped down to my knee and, and, and got it done was nervous, even though I, I had a good feeling she was going to say yes, but you know, it was definitely one of the happiest days of my life. 